Hello. Today I want to make a very short video to do a five minute crash course of something called SEM, the sharpness aware minimization. So I want to make a bold statement first out there, in my opinion, and I think it's probably true that machine learning training of a model is basically minimization of a loss function. Um, for supervised training, you're basically comparing the prediction the model is currently guessing with the labels you have as ground truth. And if the model is not guessing correctly or its guess is very far away, we try to minimize that distance, right? The model guess and the ground truth, such that the model can learn to get closer and closer. And right now, the mainstream problem is solved by stochastic gradient descent or some variations of the gradient descent, for example, Adam. Um, I have been using this as the visualization to say that, uh, you know, we don't know the landscape. Let's say these are two parameters, weight number one, weight number two, and we want to go to the global optimum, which is roughly going down in this direction. But we don't have this global landscape when we're really optimizing. What we do know is we probe a point, we know the value of this point, we also know the gradient of this point. Well, gradient is usually the point of the fastest ascent. And because we want to minimize the value, we just go one step at the fastest descent, which is gradient descent, right? We go to this value. Um, but the problem is we take a step. It's only the global option at the local gradient descent. And therefore, th when we take a step, it's often that um, we may take a stride that's too big. And then we say, well, at this point, it's saying that the gradient is leading us in this direction instead. So we're going to have a very non-smooth zigzag direction they were going, and it's not optimal, right? Then we have theories such as uh, momentum, which we say, well, you know what? Maybe when we are getting a new opinion at every point, I, I'm assuming that asking for a gradient at each point is getting a new opinion, then we are essentially asking, hey, where should I go? And we don't change our direction given every new opinion. Instead, we update our direction factor in that opinion, which means, well, if we're already going this, in this direction and this opinion wants me to go a little bit in this direction, we just adjust a little bit, right? Instead of fully going to the right direction. Let's say we, we, we're we kind of coming here and the gradient is towards me in this direction. And therefore, we are pointing a little bit, shifting a little bit of where we're going. And that's called momentum. Or we say, well, you know, we asked five, six points in a row and Although sometimes they say I should go right, sometimes I should go left, but it's always going downward somehow. So I should trust the downward direction a little bit more than left or right. So it ends up that by using algorithms such as these, we're going into a more smooth pass. However, remember that the landscape is usually very non-smooth. Um, even if we take a smooth pass, if we have a lot of local sharp optimum, then we can get tracked there because we're just looking around and every point around us says, well, you are already at the minimum over here. You should be happy and, and stay there. Um, one, we can be trapped there. Or even if we got to the global optimum, maybe it's just a kink in our data. Maybe it's just a kink in the model. And from a lot of the theory and some empirical experience that we actually prefer a very smooth optimum. And we found out that the smooth optimum is very much generalizable. So we think from literature that sharpness equals to bad generalization. So the author of the SAM paper essentially said, well, what if we have a very smooth loss function? And by doing this, we can generalize our results much better. So this is their result. Let me raise a board. Um, they say that by using this kind of method, they got this good result that the errors of model trained using this method on the image classification on C410, C410, etc., their performance increased from 0 to 40%, or their errors got reduced anywhere between 0 to 40%, which is a huge improvement. So how did they do that? Actually, the authors did a trick that's very simple. So this is, let's say, usually the loss function we're optimizing. This is just the loss itself, usually, you know, comparing the predicted value with the labels we have from the data. And this is the regularization term. Um, let's just say, you know, we shouldn't be too sensitive for individual features and the parameters shouldn't be big. Um, you know, lasso or ridge regression or typical form of regularization, L1 norm, L2 norm, they should be limited, um, the norms of the weights. And this actually already smooths out the landscape a little bit. 
doing the same thing with Sam. But Sam takes it even further. They say that we directly add a term that we call it's just sharpness aware. So what that means is when we have the loss, right? We'd perturb the loss by a vector epsilon. So we have a loss over here. And we go to some random directions around a perturbation. And by going to these perturbation, what's the worst that could happen? Which means the loss increase, right? The worst that could happen, if it's big, that means this place is very sharp and we should penalize it. And if I go around and it's as flat as I am, then this point shouldn't be penalized. It's very flat, it's very smooth. So that's the basic idea. And then therefore, you know, we can simplify this. You can say that this loss term and this term here cancels out. For simplicity, maybe this regularization, we can just write them into the L2 norm. And uh, we're just essentially minimizing this term, which is over here. And we're saying, well, this term is just maximization of the impact of a perturbation that could happen. So it's a max, right? How do we solve that? So we can evaluate this term to say that um, the max value is basically where we choose an epsilon, where the epsilon makes this point perturbed very severely. The value increased a lot. And if we take a first order Taylor expansion of this, we get this term plus a product over here. And then we are essentially reducing this problem into a dual norm problem. And the solution is simple. We have a solution right over here. We know what this term is. We can evaluate it. And if we do that, essentially we're going to, let me raise the board again, um, we're getting to this visualization. So we have a point over here. If we do simple gradient descent, we're going to this orange direction, which if you look at the contour lines over here, that's not the best value, right? We want to come somewhere around here. So what do they do? They say, well, if we perturb it, the worst direction is going to be kind of gradient ascent, right? We're going to come to this point, given the unit distance, and we're going to come here. And if the gradient is over here, we want to go in this direction. And therefore, for a point over here, we should actually come here, go to this direction, and you can see from the visualization, you know, we are coming pretty closer to where we want to be. And this is basically Sam and how the authors get this amazing result without too much changes.